Well, good morning and welcome to your Monday morning message of hope. Well, we're nearly at the end of our month looking at lessons from the lives of biblical characters. And if you've been with us over the last week or so, we've been looking at the slightly more obscure um, characters, the minor characters, if you like, in the Bible. But oh, what amazing lessons we've learnt from their lives. And today I've got a hidden gem in the person of Onesimus. If you remember, Onesimus is the person that we meet the man that we meet in Paul's letter to Philemon, that very short letter that Paul wrote to a man called Philemon. And we read there that Onesimus was a um, slave who was on the run from his master Philemon and had been accused of theft and run away uh, from his workplace and escaped. And somehow he'd ended up uh, finding Paul in prison, probably either in Rome or in Colossae, and through that, um, becoming a believer in Jesus. And then he stayed with Paul for a while and was obviously useful to him in the sense of maybe serving Paul, helping him with uh, needs that he had or being a, a kind of errand uh, person between um, Paul and the, the churches that were supporting him. Um, but then Paul writes this letter to Philemon and wants to explain what has happened and appeals to Philemon to extend forgiveness to Onesimus. And Paul also offers to pay any debt that uh, Onesimus owes Philemon uh, in order to kind of smooth over the reconciliation between them. But he feels like he needs to send Onesimus back so that if there is any uh, debt to pay, that can be paid and that Onesimus would, uh, in the right way, make reconciliation with Philemon. So that is the kind of background story that we read there. So why have I chosen Onesimus as someone we can learn from? Well, it's a kind of slightly left field approach today, my curveball, if you like. But for me, Onesimus is life is the perfect lesson uh, and, if you like, prophetic picture of what it means to fully get saved, to meet with Jesus and become a believer. You see, Onesimus is, at the beginning of the story, a slave. And Paul says in his letters, like in Romans, Ephesians, that we are enslaved to sin. And here is Onesimus enslaved to his poor choices. He's literally a slave, maybe in a way that we, we don't often have today in our culture. But he is also a slave to his sin, to his wrong choices. He's enslaved to the fear of what his master might do to him. And he runs away. His life is one on the run, overshadowed by his poor choices, by the life that he's led up until this point and by the things that are chains around him. He then encounters Paul, hears the gospel preached to him and becomes a follower of Jesus. And the amazing thing that then happens is that Paul then renames Onesimus not as a slave but as a son. So for me Onesimus's life is a lesson in that journey that we all make from slavery to sonship. And this is what Paul says in his letter to Philemon. He says, I appeal to you for my son, Onesimus, whom I have begotten while I've been in prison. And here it's just that beautiful picture of that journey that we, we go on from being a slave to sin to becoming a son of God and an heir of the kingdom and that we become adopted into the family of God. And here Paul, perhaps representative, at least for Onesimus in that encounter of the father heart of God, says, Onesimus, you're no longer a slave, but you are now adopted as my spiritual son. I'm adopting you. And in fact, Onesimus was also then put on a par with Philemon. And we know that Philemon was also a spiritual son of Paul. And the incredible thing about when we... Um, die to our old way of life and become sons and heirs of the kingdom and become adopted into God's family is that we are all put on a par with each other that there's the kind of level ground if you like at the foot of the cross and that we're all given that fresh start on a par and that's a wonderful picture that we have through Onesimus's life the lesson that we learn is that you know, whatever your past, whatever your poor choices, an encounter with Jesus gives you a thoroughly fresh start in which you can break every chain and become free and adopted and know God as father. And that is that beautiful picture here that we see. 
The second lesson I learned from this is that as we become believers and followers of Jesus, our lives discover a new and beautiful purpose that suddenly from a life that was unprofitable, we have a life that is profitable. And Onesimus encapsulates that in his very person. Paul goes on and says, I want you to accept him as a son, as I have done, who once was unprofitable to you, but now is profitable to you and to me. And he's addressing Philemon and saying, look, this guy Onesimus was useless to you in the past. In fact, that probably wasn't true because he worked for Philemon. But in the great scheme of things, he was as good as useless. And yet Paul says, now he is useful to you. He's found his destiny. He's found his purpose. He's discovered who he is. And the incredible curveball in this is that actually the name Onesimus literally means useful. And it's almost like in encountering Jesus, Onesimus suddenly finds his full purpose and destiny. He suddenly becomes what he was always meant to be. And for me, that is just such a profoundly prophetic picture in the person of Onesimus of what all of us go through when we encounter Jesus. So what can we learn from this? Well, we can be encouraged again that God has an incredible way of reaching those who are, in inverted commas, on the run and enslaved. That actually, whatever they're enslaved to, whether it is enslaved to addictions or enslaved to fears and anxieties or in chains to past mistakes that they have made that cause them to remain in bondage today, that an encounter with Jesus can break every chain and set them free. And I want to encourage you with that today. Maybe you're listening today and you've got someone on your heart in your friendship circle or maybe even in your family and you can see how enslaved they are, how some of the things they struggle with in life, choices they've made or stuff that life has just dealt them, which has caused them to be in chains. And we pray today together for those people. We want to ask you, Father, that you would encounter them, and that Jesus would meet with them, that you would bring the Pauls across their path who can really share the good news of the kingdom with them and help them to see themselves not as slaves, but as sons and of heirs. And Father, we thank you that you can adopt them into your family, make them secure again and help them to discover their full and beautiful purpose and destiny in you. And that was the other thing I just really want to pray with you today. Maybe you're listening to this and you know that you've broken every chain. You know that you've come into a relationship with Jesus, but maybe you haven't yet fully discovered your purpose and your destiny. And perhaps you feel useless, but may God today give you such a new sense of destiny and purpose, whatever season of life you're in, that you will find again a usefulness, that you will not um, labour under the, the label of being useless to God, because no one he has made and adopted and called is useless in the kingdom. And whatever you are called to, whether it's giving a word of encouragement to someone at a checkout in the supermarket, or whether it's being a great mum or a great grandmother, or whether it's being a, a papa to many other people, maybe even a spiritual father. Father, we want to ask you today that you would bring out the treasure in each one of us, as you did for Onesimus. And Father, that like Onesimus, we would discover we are useful in these days. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You see, the amazing thing about Onesimus's life is that he then went on to be incredibly useful for the kingdom. As he was adopted into the family of God, as he became part of the brotherhood and was received by the others in the faith community, he began to serve alongside Paul and alongside Tychicus in encouraging the church. And in fact, commentators suggest that this Onesimus might well have been the Onesimus that we later read becomes the bishop of the new church in Ephesus, a leader in the church, mentoring and training others and bringing them into the fold as well. What an incredible destiny. What a journey from slavery to sonship. And may we receive from his life today that profound encouragement that we too can go on that journey, but so can those we are praying for today. So I trust that that was helpful to you. I trust it was an encouragement and 
maybe just fun as well, slightly left field approach today. Don't forget to join Rachel on Wednesday. She will be doing our final part in this series. And I want to suggest she might just also throw a little curveball in just to keep you awake <laughs> and entertained at the end of this month that we hope you've enjoyed. And then in October, we've got a great series lined up for you. So I hope you continue to do this journey with us. And may God really, really bless you today. Enjoy the rest of your Monday and join Rachel on Wednesday. Thanks so much.